I auctioned one of the world's rarest records. That's great, isn't it? That's so painful to see. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we show uh, the camera? Yeah. Uh, we, we, are, you, are you videoing now? Yeah? <laughs> well, we also one of the world's rarest, rarest records and there was massive, huge competition. It was eventually won by um, one of Australia's um, biggest collectors. And it, he was absolutely ecstatic in after it all his life. So we mailed it off. And we thought we'd send it to FedEx because it's going to be dead safe. <laughs> and it's uh, actually, oh look, there's another little bit. <laughs> I don't know how much uh, people will pay for this little bit of uh, Don Gardner's cheating kind, but uh, it got, oh, it got <laughs> run over. The FedEx truck actually went over it. And you had already auctioned it, you'd already had I'd the already auctioned it and been paid for it. So we lost out terribly. I think it went for nine thousand something nine thousand three hundred something like that and how much did you get it for how much did you buy oh well, i no i was auctioning it for for a collector right who i had to um so we lost out twofold we had to pay the collector who sold it yes we sold it for uh, less our commission for what it sold it for then we had to refund the man in australia and the poor guy in australia when he opened the packet he had palpitations and being serious, he nearly had a heart attack. So he he opened this record. So he it opened did actually this, get sent. Opened this record. FedEx. He he just nearly went into a break meltdown. And you had no idea that it. Had no. Been... What that what had happened was when we got the uh, the thing back, we could see that the truck had actually backed over the bag world it was in. You know, I don't know how unlucky you can get. Yeah, but the funny unlucky. thing, <laughs> look, we're all okay now. I mean, every, everybody came out of it, and it's a. It's actually uh, a story that I can just about bear to talk about. <laughs> but there's, as you notice, there's still bits missing. Um, you know, it, it just doesn't even go back together very well. And uh, about a month later, uh, the guy got over what had happened to this record, and uh, he he Facebook me <laughs> and says, "I'm just pushing the dog. I found a bit of." <laughs> Don Gardner in it. So, <laughs> he's pushing the dog, and a bit of Don Gardner fell out on on the, on the dog's hair. So yeah, that's good. But we're going to frame that, and uh, we're going to hang it on the wall as the the the, the worst uh, thing that could ever. I, I think that's me. probably the worst thing I've ever seen happen to a record. How well, how many Don so, Gardner cheating cheating kinds are actually out well, there? Well, you know, uh, the, this brings me to a, a, another great story. Is that. Uh, um, I had this record first. I, I, I bought it off John Anderson, mm -hmm. who um, at that time was uh, the most prolific soul dealer in the world. As uh, you know, he's uh, he's uh, retired a little bit now, but in, back in the day, he had more great soul records than anybody on the planet. And I bought it for three pound, not this actual record, but a copy a, of this. Yeah. I would play it at Cleethorpe's Pier and get no reaction at all. I, and uh, one day I went to the Ritz and it was a time when um, the big records at the Ritz at, on that day, to give you an idea of how, how the music was going, was um, The Miracles mm -hmm. uh, yeah. off the City of Angels LP, uh, Love Machine. That was huge. And then there was uh, Tavares, It Only Takes a Minute, and Heaven Must Be an, Missing an Angel, which was huge. And I was trying to play things like Bernie Williams ever again, try to play Cheating Kind, uh, I pl tried to play uh, Inspirations, Not Your Wishes, My Commander, No One Else Can Take Your Place. And I played that and they all bombed because everybody was into Love Machine, Heaven Must miss Be Missing an Angel and things like that. And on that day I got quite disillusioned and Colin Curtis said to me, he says, uh, do you fancy selling your, um, your Bernie Williams ever again? Uh, I says, yeah, 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 I'll probably sell it. He says, I'll tell you what, I'll swap it for Andre Gagon's Wow, which was a French disco record. <laughs> and it's, uh, it was dreadful then, it's dreadful now, but it was just the thing people were starting to dance to. Right. And Colin Curtis was playing it, and he got another copy. I swapped um, 
Bernie Williams have again yeah. uh, for Andre Gagon's Wow, and I thought, wow, I've done a decent deal. I've got something to play, which is going to get big. Andre Gagon's Wow on Decca now is worth probably a quid, and the Bernie is, Williams is that because there's so many, or the, just the, because it just is really? It never song. ever took off as a record. Uh, Colin Kershaw, I don't think he really played it, and I played it, and it uh, didn't take off. So that was a, That's the a worst deal I ever did in my life until, <laughs> until I got down off the stage, went to the bar, and uh, Ian Levine says to me, he says, oh, what have you got? You've just sold Colin uh, that ever again. I wanted that ever again. I said, well, I've got other things. And he went through my box and he says, how much for your inspirations? No one else can take your place. I says, I don't really want to sell that. He says, well, how much for that cheating kind? I says, three quid. And he says, how much for the utopias on LaSalle? And... Uh, and I says, well, I want 15 quid for that because that, that, that's pretty good. It's rare. He gave me 15 quid. He says, go on, sell me the inspiration. I says, I ain't selling it less for 20 quid. And in today's market, those four records, I, I, I got Andre Gagon's Wow and uh, 38 quid. Yeah. Which in those days was not, not a bad sum to have for records. And 38 quid for, in today's market, something like 10, 20, towards 30,000 pounds worth of records. So, so how long? Thirty thousand pounds worth of records. I got thirty-eight quid for. 